Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Today's video, I'm going to be covering all my skin depths collection, how to care for it. But today's not a propagation video, although propagation for them is super simple. Watch my other propagation videos like the Epipremnums and see how I propagate them. And maybe in the future, I'll do a propagation video on these, but they're so easy. These guys are actually from Southeast Asia and a lot of them are actually endemic to Indonesia so I'm very proud about that. There are very very many varieties the care is very similar but a lot of them are actually labeled pothos but they are not related to the pothos that we know which is the apipremnum it's a completely whole new genre of aeroids but yeah these guys are in the aeroid family and disclaimer some of these may be mislabeled because Skin Dapsus has become so popular these days that sellers will name everything Skin Dapsus just so that we can buy them. But the most famous mislabeled one is the Skin Dapsus Lucens, which is actually a, a... can't remember the name, I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Something Affini. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole new aeroid and this I assume will be another species but it's sold to me as a Skin Dapsus. I will give you a tour at the end of this video to show you what they look like close up because they're super spectacular up close and videos don't do them justice and videos don't do them justice so I really hope that you can see one of these in person whether it's in a store or a botanical garden or if you want to own one of these they're actually quite attainable and a little bit about their growth habit before I talk about the care they start out in the jungle floor forest floor in the sort of low to medium light area where they would root into sort of the ground and then they will be epiphytic they will grow upwards so as they grow upwards, they will have these shingling leaves that climb and they will change its form. And that is, I, I would assume, it's a happier form where they really want to be. And they would grow up rocks and trees and things like that to get better light, better access to nutrients. And each of their aerial roots that latch onto the trees or walls will be able to take in water and nutrients as well for the plant. The mission of every single living thing in this world is to thrive and be happy. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to find their place in this world. So you can actually grow them trailing down. If, you, if they trail down, they will produce smaller and smaller leaves because they don't want to invest in so much energy to putting out really nice, spectacular leaves that way. So it's just going to get smaller and smaller. But if you let them climb up, you will see a little bit larger leaves. Keep in mind, they're not like your monsteras and epipremnums. They don't get massively huge, but they will change in form and they will grow a little bit faster. But really quickly about the care, and in the wild, they actually start in medium light area in the forest floor, where a lot of the leaves would fall, seeds. I don't think that these guys actually do flower often, but then they would have these cuttings that fall onto the forest floor and they would just propagate itself. And then it would just continue to make this way up because most aeroids what they want to do is they want to climb up they want to get better access to light and nutrients so these guys can take medium light all the way to a little bit of direct sunlight and keep in mind for a lot of the skin depths especially the silver ones the more light they give it the more silver it will have conversely the less light you give it the more green it will produce for you of course when you give this higher light they will grow a little bit faster and they will require a little bit more watering so yeah, there's a very versatile plants that do well both indoors and outdoors and they really tolerate a wide range of lighting condition. But here's where it gets tricky, watering. Again, as I mentioned, more light equals more watering, less light equals less watering. These guys do not like to be overwatered. So I would keep this a little bit on the underwatered side. You really do make sure that the potting mix is completely dry between watering. You can, you know, use a moisture meter. You can, if it's a plastic pot, you can lift the pot. Or you can just give it a very chunky potting mix. Uh, but one of the symptoms of underwatering would be curling leaves. And the symptom of overwatering is also curling leaves. So just be sure, like if you see that your skin depth is curling, and thankfully not, none of mine is curling now, but you're either under or overwatering it. If you under if you overwater it to an extreme, it will start losing a lot of leaves and it will turn yellow. So if you have one or two leaves that are older, that turn yellow, that's normal because they do shed leaves once in a while. But if you have a lot of massive leaf loss, just the same with your Monstera philodendrons, it's a sign of overwatering. If you see crisping tips, uh, dry brown tips at the edge, that's usually a sign of underwatering. And those crispy tips would usually not have any yellow line between the leaf and the crisping edge. So it's just gonna be a dry crispy look. These guys actually do well in both general purpose potting mix and aeroid potting mix. Now this is a question that I get asked a lot. So the aeroid potting mix is made of very chunky bits of coconut chips, charcoal, 
it really allows the roots to grip into the media. So this will dry out faster, which is a good thing. That means that you're less likely to overwater it. But if you're gonna grow, for example, this one here, this is the variegated skin dapsis. I only have one vine here. It's grown in an arid potting mix. And if I allow this to climb up, from the beginning, it's already believing that it's gripping onto something. It will produce these gripping thick roots, uh, more like aerial roots, I guess, that will grip into the media and it will produce larger and larger leaves. And as it climbed up, of course, the uh, roots that are attaching to the wall or the tree or the moss pole will also encourage this to push out bigger, bigger leaves and that shingling pattern that we love in skin dapsis. So arid potting mix is for that purpose. However, a lot of us are growing our skin dapsis in these really, really full baskets and you want us, we want them to trail down for this one. This is actually a parent plant. So I'm going to be producing a lot of babies from this. So there are many, many plantlets in here and skin dapsis have really, really robust, really thick roots. So they do need a lot of root space. In that case, I definitely recommend a general purpose potting mix for a bushier look because we're not encouraging them to put out big leaves that climb up. We're letting them trail down and we want a lot of space in the roots for it to grow. And they do need to re be repotted pretty often, especially if they're root bound, because as I mentioned earlier, they do put out quite a bit. They do put out quite a lot of roots. I fertilize this the same with all my other house plants, uh, naturally and synthetically, dilute everything, but I do it often. And these guys are actually very, very pest resistant, which is why they are such a popular house plant. I don't really have any spider mites or mealybug issues with some of them, except maybe once in a while if I neglect them for too long. If I take them out of the pot, I may see some mealybugs in the potting mix, but that is something that happens across all species. It's not something that is targeted towards the skin dapsis. Uh, other than that, they're actually very, very slow to propagate, but then once they take off, man, they can be pretty fast growers, except if I can rank a slowest growing one, the Skindesis trubii dark form, this is a super slow grower. And the fastest growing would probably be the most common Skindesis pictus exotica, which we will see later. I guess without further ado, I'm just gonna deep dive into each species. I'm gonna get up close and personal and hope you'll find some that you'll fall in love with. So I've got these propagated, they're just single node, single leaf propagations and they take usually 100% success rates. Skindesis are the easiest plants to propagate. There's some propagating right now, but this is actually my favorite one. It's not shown on the table over there because it's latched onto the wall. Look at how beautiful the growth pattern is here. Like if you allow it to climb up, it will produce rounder leaves, very interesting shape. And it's got this left, right, left, right shingling pattern, beautiful markings on the leaves. So this is by the way, uh, the skin depth is silver splash. This is actually my favorite. And let me tell you why. Look at how different each leaf is. This is uh, very, very silver, and this is actually very responsive to light. As you can see, this is grown on a shelf. So as you go up here, you get less, you can see there's a sh shadow over here. As it gets less and less light, it'll give you more and more green leaves. If this didn't have a shelf up top, this will produce much more silver leaves. So I really love the texture on these. Very, very beautiful marking. And they're very, very easy to come by, at least here in Indonesia. And this is an old leaf, by the way, see? This is the oldest leaf, turning yellow. Very, very normal, just take it off. No sweat. Uh, yeah, next to it, actually, this is the Skindepsis pictus exotica. This is the most common Skindepsis, also the cheapest. And I really love these two. This is actually one of the fastest growing ones in my collection. And look at how beautiful they are. This is actually the plant that made me fall in love with Skindepsis. Really, videos don't do them justice. This is the silver here. You can't really see them that well on camera. Really, really, really stunning. And this one can get really massive leaves. This is actually only half the size of how big their leaves can be. I just love how picturesque the leaves are. Each of them have different splash. Very nice, very easy to care for. This is truly a uh, very rewarding house plan to have that is a good lifelong partner. And this is how they latch onto a wall. So a lot of you guys are asking, how do I have my plants attach onto the wall? Like whether it's philodendron monster, I just kind of set it in front of the wall and the back of the leaf, as you can see, you will just find the wall and kiss it. I Sometimes I would hose down the wall, so I would miss this whole thing up and then it would just root into it. And now this, these roots are able to take in water and nutrients for the plant. And I just moved in here about three months ago. So this is only three months worth of growth that it's attached itself onto. And look at how beautiful these leaves are. They become rounder. And of course this is smaller only because it's getting 
less light there's a shelf underway but once this breakthrough up top it's gonna be interesting to see what they look like it's gonna be a lot more silver um, but yeah I really love their shingling growth pattern imagine this grown up a wood plank that's also quite an, a beautiful look so yeah this is not suitable indoors because you can't really hose down your walls when you're indoors while out here it gets rained on or whatever and it just latched on and okay, I hope my landlord is not watching this but when I move out of here I think this will leave a, a mark on the wall it will leave like a line so i may have to paint this over when i leave moving on let's look at this beauty here which i believe is probably not a skin depth but it's sold to me as one so if you do know what it is please do comment down below it is pretty it does have a skin depth like growth pattern here but i don't think it is a skin depth because there are so many arrows that we just don't know about and i think this is one of them and over here, this is the jade satin skin dapsis. And as you can see, it does look like a jade and it's got a satin finish. So this is why it's named that way. Very, very pretty, very understated plant. And I believe this is common overseas, but over here we don't really see them very often. But this is a very classic green skin dapsis. It's got this beautiful, just satin look. I really like this, but yeah, this is quite uncommon here, but not expensive. This is the popular skin Skindapsis Trubiae Moonlight. I have a lot of these in the nursery, but here this is what I have preserved in my own home. Uh, I believe this is a little bit overwatered. As you can see, it's already a little bit uh, stressed. This is never dried out, by the way. The potting mix is a little bit too, too wet for it. But it's okay. Normally when this happens, because I hose down my plants liberally every day, uh, once it's got more leaves, it's got more roots down there, it will start drinking up more water. So this plant literally has to get used to my watering habits and they can. They can absolutely get used to our watering habits. So yeah, this is the Skindapsis Turbii Moonlight, which is getting popular overseas and also highly uh, cultivated overseas. So this has become very accessible. And a little bit more rare, let me jump over a little bit because this is a little bit similar to that. This is the Skindapsis SP Sumatra. It is often uh, mistaken for the Skindapsis Turbii Moonlight, but as you can see, this is different. It's got these like paint strokes, it's got these stripes down the middle. Uh, not the middle, sorry, the sides. The middle is green. So yeah, let me go back to the, this is the, let me put them side by side actually. See, so this is the, on the right, that's the Turbii Moonlight. And on the right, that's the skin, that's this SP Sumatra, which I assume is from the Sumatra uh, Island. So moving on next, this is the Skindapsis tricolor or tricolor. I've never actually heard of this one. I saw this on Tokopedia, which is an online marketplace. And sorry, they don't ship overseas, but this wasn't that expensive. I believe it was like around 150 or 250,000 Indonesian rupiah. So it's, it's got three colors in it, like this dark green, this silver, and this light green. And this is actually a, a three leaf cutting. So this is a new leaf and that's a newer leaf that's come out. So this hasn't fully hardened yet, but I believe as it hardens, it will become this dark color. This is actually quite nice. Do you see how it's glittering? It's shimmering in the light. <laughs> I may have to check back on my words. This may have become my favorite skin dapsis from the Silver Splash, just because it's got the extra color in it. And then here is the skin dapsis Argerius. And I have better ones in the nursery, which I'm gonna show you a B-roll of, so you'll see that on the screen. But it's got, uh, it's very slow growing, first of all, it's, but it's got this beautiful rim around the edge. It's not as big, the leaves are pretty small, but they're thicker and uh, they're very stingy about putting out those spots on the leaves. Uh, very, very slow growing, as I mentioned, very slow to propagate, but very pretty nonetheless. It's got this really uh, expensive look because of its dark velvety green foliage with just this silver rim. It's quite a nice specimen. I do really enjoy having this around. And the next one here is a silvery ant. This is actually new to the market in Indonesia. I bought this as a two leaf cutting for a million Indonesian rupiah. That's almost half the price of a variegated Monstera. But since then, the price of these has fallen and it's now about a third of that price. And it will continue to fall because this is pretty slow, uh, pretty fast growing. But overseas, this is the common plant. So the thing about silvery ant is that they put out this uh, different variegation on the leaf. It's gonna be super random on each leaf giving it very beautiful texture. Very good for interior, actually. I really like the, the look on these. Imagine a bushy plant of this. And the next one here, I have to look at the tag. This is the skin depth. I'm sorry about the construction, by the way. It's all going full speed now after the end of the lockdown. 
So this is the skin depth of Silver Hero Platinum. I'm not sure if the name is legit or not, but that's how I bought it as. Really, really pretty plant. I don't see many of the dark. I see a little bit of dark green in the middle here. Very, very pretty. This is quite new to me too, so I'm still learning about this plant. Putting out the new growth point there. So yeah, I'm going to be propping, propagating these like crazy. And skin depths now are, are very hot ticket items, by the way. And ref, uh, certain Raphidophoras and Syngoniums, they're having their time right now on Instagram. So yeah, and this is the Skindapsa Silver Queen, if I'm not wrong. It's got thicker leaves, it's got more silver on the leaves. Very, very pretty. And you, you run your finger through it, this is like a knife. It's actually very thick and sharp edge. Very different from the other Skindapsas, actually. Uh, very pretty, uh, new to me. I, I'm not familiar with this plant at all. It almost looks like a camouflage pattern. Very nice. I <laughs> don't know what else to say. So I bought this next one as a Skindapsis variegated. It's a yellow variegated Skindapsis. Although again, I doubt if it's, it is Skindapsis or not, but it should be this color. Very pretty. But then unfortunately it started putting out green leaves and this is actually a sign of overwatering. I tend to overwater my skin depths because I, again, I hose everything down very liberally. So this is overwater, this is overwater, this is not variegation, but this stripe here is variegation. So what I'm gonna do is when this gets a little bit older, I'm gonna cut it to single notes and hopefully some of them will produce variegation. I don't see any variegation on the stem. I don't know if variegation on the stem is a thing for skin depths, but otherwise this would be a pretty plan, but I just need to uh, not, not overwater it and I need to cut it up to single notes. So let's see how that goes. This is another plant that I'm sure is probably not a skin depth, but it's labeled as skin depth black Sumatra. And it's got longer leaves. It does have a skin depth growth pattern, don't get me wrong. But it is a little bit different from the skin depth true BI, which we'll talk about next. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. I quite like the shape of the leaves. They look like I don't know what they look like. They look like some other plants. <laughs> Maybe a Hoya or something. I don't know. Very interesting leaves. Um, definitely one of the sharper or narrower leaves of the skin dapsis, if it is a skin dapsis. And finally here, we do have the skin dapsis Trubii Dark. And this is actually a really gorgeous plant. Quite sought after and they have this beautiful glossy black, almost black leaves. Very slow grower, just so you know. This will really test your patience. And another thing with them is that they are very prone to bacteria and fungus. So this is kept outdoors. This is kept indoors. I don't know, something pooped on it. Or maybe this is a Hoya sap, sap from a different plant. Uh, but if you keep them indoors, look at how beautiful and glossy and clean the leaves are. Because I water this plant on the soil level and not on the top. But this one kept outdoors will have bacteria and fungal spots on them and hard water stain. When you have a dark foliage like this, you're going to retain a lot of the dark, I mean, the, the hard water stains on the leaves. So yeah, the, there's a, a downside to this plant. It's beautiful. Nonetheless, so I would definitely recommend this for indoors. If you want a slower growing plant, it doesn't take, they don't take over your space too quickly. And this is the right one for you. So I guess that's all um, the skin depths that I have. There are some more in the market that I'm not very familiar with but I'm sure I will start collecting them at some point. And I hope that you guys found something here that um, piqued your interest, I guess. And you guys are learning to propagate and care for your skin depths because they're actually very nice to share. Very good for plant swaps, actually, because as you can see, there's so many varieties of them and they're all a little bit interesting. The care is very similar. So highly, highly recommend, even for beginners. All right, so a little bit of bonus footage for you guys. I'm at Titik Hijau. Uh, Instagram is going to be on the screen. And this is Mr. Rico. He's the owner here. And he put together all his Skindapsis collection because he has so many Skindapsis here that I don't have. And they are so, so trending right now. Uh, without uh, getting too overwhelmed, I guess we'll go from left to right, I guess. Starting from over which one should we want to see? What are, What's happening with this one here? Yeah, yeah that's the, the Exotica, actually. Yeah, some people call it the mean, mean variegated, but okay. you know, I'm not really sure the, the, the species uh, and then the name as well, because when they, they turn to be mean colors, it could be steady on it. Yeah, so this white, will it turn green? Sometimes, sometimes, it, it could be like this. It, it could be like green. this, but I don't know since this, these leaves, mm -hmm. that's uh, becoming steady. Becoming steady. Is this albino? Not, not, not albino, right? Not albino. 
Wow, this is so pretty. <laughs> oh my goodness. And uh, okay, so we're gonna mention the price here. Um, uh, and disclaimer, prices disclaimers, change. Disclaimers, disclaimers. Yeah. So far, I never sold it, but before I bought it, I bought it one leaf about, uh, I think, uh, 800 USD. Oh one my leaf. God. Yeah, like down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone bigger. All right, we have so many, so let's move on. So this is the baby, and yeah? And then this, no, no, this, this is different one. This oh is, God. we call it, uh, it is the same. This is, we call it Skin Depths uh, Truby Moonlight for mm. the basic. Mm. And then the variegated, some people call it the sports superstar. Superstar. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, uh, trending name. Nice. And this, name. everything's from Indonesia, right? Because they're uh, endemic here. And I really want to stay really quickly. A lot of these skin dances that are variegated, they would not survive in the wild because variegated plants usually will get, uh, will lose competition from this green because these all come in a green form. The green form will win in the race. So this is actually very impressive that people manage to take them and then uh, kind of cultivate them and multiply them here because these guys actually will not survive, seriously. Because the way that skin dances actually propagate is they would, you know, some of the leaves will fall and uh, they will fall down to the forest floor down below mm -hmm. where it's a little bit darker and they will propagate themselves. So this is really interesting. Okay, anyways, I digress. So this is the starlight. Can you tell us a bit the price roughly? The price, I think about 3,000. Yeah, US dollars? Yeah, uh, I've sold it. I've sold it. <laughs> okay. It's 3,000 US dollars. We just propagate. It's very, very slow grow. I just propagate I can two imagine. leaves. Two leaves out there of this. Just grow new baby. Yeah. And this, this is the bottom one. Oh my God! There's no them cutting. So I, I I have it last years. I think at, at the end of 2020. Uh, since I have it only like that. Nice. <laughs> so it's, it's very very slow growth. Different with others. And this is the green on green. Yes, that green on green. You can see that. Yeah. That's exotica as well. Yeah. So that one's an exotica too mm -hmm. before. And the green on green. Do you have the price roughly? Uh, so far, I'm selling for 2,500. We have the other one. I think this is different. Yeah, yeah the price it's about 2,500. Mostly, yeah. Mostly, all of my my uh, skin depths here, I'm selling for three leaves, 2,500. Okay. And then uh, 1,000 USD per leaves. Next, which one? This is over. Which is different? I don't even know who's different. Yeah, this is this is Truby Moonlight as well, but the yellow variegated. Yellow variegated Truby Moonlight. This is yellow as well. Yes, yellow. yellow. And then this is the marble one. Ah, also Truby. Truby Moonlight as well. This is so pretty, you guys. Imagine. Okay, so this is a, a, like a cutting, right? But imagine a full pot <laughs> of this. It's, yeah. It's not really seen anywhere yet, right? Because this is quite new. I don't think many people have full pots of these going. Uh, what is the price on this roughly? About three thousand. Okay. <laughs> I'm gasping for air here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is Tribia Moonlight as well. Moonlight as well. Okay, but they're all very different, yeah. And the, they're really different. Yeah, the variegation seem to be pretty stable, mm -hmm. but every leaf is different. This is the same. This is the jet satin. Oh, okay. Jet not, satin. Not in the Tribia family anymore. Mm -hmm. Jet satin. How do you remember all this? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can recognize it. Yeah, and this is the skin. That's this. No, no, no. This is the epipremnum. Epipremnum marble. Just, just. But still uh, pretty. Different. What is it? What, uh, which one is it? Epipremnum. Uh, marble. Marble, yeah. No. Marble variegated. I think. I think it's not come from Indonesia. Okay, let me guess. This one. This is the Trubii dark. Yeah. Yellow yes. variegated. <laughs> Trubi black variegated. <laughs> Easy to guess. This one too. No, no. This is this is the blue albu. Oh my goodness! Look at how beautiful this is. Oh my god, okay. How much is uh, this one? This one per leaf I'm selling for 1,500. Oh my god, okay. Per leaves. Yeah. And the variegation, look at that from up top. You can it's really quite see. quite stable. Yeah. And then this one, I have a feeling this is more, yeah. How much <laughs> this is, more, this more. How much is this one? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not selling yet. You're not, yeah? Yeah, just growing it first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the prices do change, so if you come back here in a year's time, don't follow the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everything's yeah, yeah. changing. As, but, as long as the... the, the the stock uh, okay to be sold uh, cheaper, I can do that. Yeah. What is this one then? This just satin. We, we can sell more leaves. Yeah, same as this the one, same. right? Yeah. yeah. This is re ready to be sold, this I think. Is but not everything's ready to be sold, right? Some of yeah, them are, are mother plants. Not everything, actually. But mostly I'm selling for top cutting three leaves. 
Okay. Mostly, but some people expect one leaf only, something like that. We we can you provide can do it. it. And you can also pre-order, of course. Yes. Because we yes, mentioned like that this, in the video. Like this, you can you can do pre-order for this, for top cutting. We can discuss for the price. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a video here at Titi Kijau next month. So be on lookout for that. It's about exporting. So yeah. But today we're here about skin depth. So what is this one? This one is I forget the name. It's not very Paracensis, but. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> but this is not for sale, I guess? Not for sale. Yeah. Need to be chopped. <laughs> yeah. And then let's look at... There's so much more over here. Yeah. One tray full of the moonlight. Yeah, this one here. They actually look like the philodendron white uh, wizard. Yeah, yeah white wizard. From the front. <laughs> because it's so white. And this one has the flag. Uh, on like half moon. Yes. Very pretty. Yes. Just imagine like a full like giant <laughs> pot. Oh my gosh, one day, one day, I will, maybe 10 years time. Okay, <laughs> 10 years. And this one is? That's the Truby Moonlight. The, 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 moonlight. the yellow one. Okay, same as the ones over yes, the there that we saw. The same. And this is the same. This looks This different. is the exotic. The same Exotica, one. That. that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the, the, it's hard to tell because every one of them look different. Different the patterns, variation. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the one that we can notice is yellow and uh, white. white. Only like that. Yeah, and it and takes marble. A, <laughs> it takes a trained eye to see this vine here is so beautiful. Look at this. It looks like a coaster here <laughs> from the top. <laughs> so I guess yeah, this is a real treat for us to be here. Thank you for having us and showing us the collection. I think now you've seen most of the skin dapses. You know whether it's in my home collection and also here in this nursery. Very very rare skin dapses. Yeah, you've seen it all. Thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagation, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.